Hey guys, welcome to Quinnia's Budget Crafts. So this time we got Team Scarlet. I've been pretty excited to do this one because the uh, pirate aesthetic is going to be pretty fun to do. Like all the teams, they've got a bunch of different, like they have two perk classes and they have their own uh, individual team perks. Uh, most of these have to do with running into other people and not actually using them. If you do want to use them, you totally can. What I will take advantage of is the crew quarters. They can purchase an extra crew member upgrade at half the listed cost. So yeah, definitely going to use that. Also, that way, if you wanted to use, like, the Raiders perk, where you can reduce your crew to attack, to, you know, if you have the book, you'll you know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, you can use that perk if you want, because you have the extra crew to do it. But that's the only one I'm going to actually uh, pay any attention to for this build, but if you wanted to use the others, go for it. So I've been seeing a lot of videos recently about, um, like, can you fully 3D print a whole whatever army, like Warhammer or something like that? And it got me thinking, can you 3D print a whole Gaslands team? Because, I mean, they're, they're meant to be played with, like, Matchbox cars and, you know, Hot Wheels, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of parts available, but not much for uh, printing the whole thing. There are a ton of cars on Thingiverse, and I'm kind of cheating here by using boats. But I did use a lot of car parts to make the boats into cars. You'll see. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and 3D print this whole thing. Of course, with any 3D print, you're going to have to go ahead and spray the whole thing with the um, primer of your choice. I just use gray stuff out of the rattle can. It works just fine. And here's the collection of models I'm going to be using for this. Every single one of these models I have linked down below. Except for the engine. I'm sorry I couldn't link that one because the, the uh, Thingiverse, whatever thing in the notepad file that comes with it. It gives me a 404. It might be a valid link, but you guys know how thingy is. The downside to 3D printing all this stuff means that I gotta paint all this stuff. And anybody who knows me knows how I feel about painting. I don't like it. Although, with all this painting, I did learn a couple things. Uh, I did learn how to use my airbrush a little bit better. Not not totally better, but I'm getting there. Uh, I also learned that, especially if you're using an airbrush, you cannot be afraid to paint yourself a little bit. i definitely understanding why, like, Miniac and Brent and those guys wear a glove when they're painting. Because they, they do expect to spray themselves. As far as, like, color choices and stuff go, that's totally up to you. My basic method is to uh, paint it a little bit lighter than I want it to start out with. That way when I add washes and stuff, I don't just turn everything dark brown. Although, this is a whole bunch of wood, so it does kind of need to be dark brown. Still though, this sandy color works pretty well as a base coat for most of these wood parts. So for the tires, I just went ahead and stuck some plastic toothpicks in them with a bit of super glue. That way I can stick them into a foam block and then spray them with a flat black primer. That way it's easy to paint, you know, like the rims and stuff. Because technically what you put on there was a primer, so it'll take other paints pretty well without having any issues. Of course, with the metal stuff, like I always do, I just stuck those on. Gave them a little uh, rattle can silver, the Rust-Oleum metallic stuff. That works pretty good. Once your tires are dry, you can go ahead and just snip the toothpick right off with like some flush cutters. That'll work just fine. You're going to end up having to drill the back of these to fit whatever attachment method you use anyway. So don't worry about having to like dig them out or anything right now. Just cut them off. You'll be fine. Then while messing with uh, the boat and the cannons and all that good stuff, I realized something here. This longship's um, it's a bit small. It's really meant to stand in for a bus, and if you compare it to a Matchbox car, or maybe this is Hot Wheels, I'm not sure, it's pretty tiny, and if I try to put these cannons in here, they don't really fit. Neither do the crew, and if I compare the crew to the little Matchbox I've got, it's, I mean, they're about the right size, so uh, the ship's got to be bigger. So, back to the slicer, and go ahead and do this thing again. I actually ended up doing it three times. For the final print that was actually the correct size was, go figure, the default size the boat was. But you know, uh, if you're printing out this particular model, just print it at full size, that's the appropriate size. Maybe a hair big, but it's, it's fine, it'll be fine. If you are using Chitu Box, um, don't trust auto supports. I'd like to hit auto support 
and then uh, go through and add other ones that I want. Because auto supports by themselves are not going to work. As far as my supports go, for the most part, I'm just running point twenties on uh, the light setting there, and I've reduced the middle thing down a little bit too, so that if it uses those little tiny like sticks in between tight areas, they'll be very small. They print out about the size of a human hair or something. They're very small. And I get it all set up to print and go. Five hours later, we got new parts. This is actually the second batch though. The third one, I had a power failure while printing. I did pick up a UPS, so this won't happen again, but I cut the ores off and that actually turned out to be better. We'll, we'll get to that later. Anyway, in the meantime though, the reason I use the supports that are so incredibly small for the most part is you can just throw this stuff into some hot soapy water, leave it sit for five minutes, and then the supports will just pull right off. I am using water washable resin though, so that is something to keep in mind. If you ended up with any little support bumps anywhere, or like those little tiny like hair-like ones that are just stuck in between tight places, Sharp Exacto will just trim that right off, no problem. If you wait until after you cure it, you're probably gonna have to actually buzz it off with like a, you know, a file or a rotary tool or something. That makes dust everywhere. I like to do it when it's still soft. Anyway, back to painting. All my, um tan stuff has dried so now I'm going through with some Agrax Earthshade and just soaking everything. Something I should have done when I was doing the boats when they first came out when they were still soft they hadn't been cured all the way is scrape them to put wood grain because these models don't have wood grain which is kind of missing but it, it'll be a fine. I also learned something about this silver spray on paint. It is super slick. You cannot paint over it. Paint will not stick to it. But it also doesn't stick for crap, and if you want to scrape it off, that's really easy to do with either an X-Acto blade or a wire brush. So for these motors, I just went ahead and scraped it off of the skull. That way I could go through and paint the skull a, you know, skull color. For the grenade boxes, I just put a little bit of airbrush paint because it's pretty thin more than anything. Any thin green paint will do fine just to get it all over the inside, cover all the grenades. All of the cannon barrels and other miscellaneous metal parts were done with some gunmetal gray. And these little mortars I picked up, those are linked below too. These things are fantastic. They have so much detail. On the little dinghies here, I decided to go ahead and paint those uh, top things in the front and back and the gunnels all silver. And while I've got the silver out, I'll go ahead and try to do up all the spoons on the grenades. Not perfect, you don't have to be perfect, just a couple little hints of silver here and there. You could probably get away with just dry brushing it if you wanted to. And of course, all of the rims on the tires. Like I mentioned earlier, this is just black primer, so painting over top of it's no problem at all. Then I got out the black paint and did a few accents here and there. I was trying to make the harpoon uh, holder thing look a little bit different. And then uh, some black on the pumpkin ball for the axle there. A little bit of red on those front shocks just to make them look different, something to make them stand out. And then I decided for the uh, harpoon, I wanted to make the housing portion look like wood, so I painted that with some mahogany. It ended up a bit streaky, and because of the print lines on the, uh, the harpoon itself, that kind of added some texture too, which really actually worked in my favor. It really, really looks like wood in person. And now we move on to the part that I was dreading the most. 16 tiny little pirates. For the sake of expediency here, I decided to do um, pretty much the same color on everyone. Uh, first thing I did is go through and give everybody brown pants. 
Some of the accents like sword cheese and that sort of thing also got the same brown. Then I used some elf flesh for the skin. My strategy here was to paint the lower lying portions of the model first. So that way I don't have to be that careful trying to get into all the little recesses. And then anything that's on the higher portions of the model, I could paint over that with the other color and it would hopefully work out. Of course, everybody gets black boots because of course they do. As somebody who has a whole lot more talent with uh, painting in general and more time, could do some really good things with these models. Several of these models have remarkable amounts of detail. Like the guy with the epic cape there, he would be awesome printed out like 72 mil and you know painted up real nice. Then I went through painting on hair colors, trying to randomize it a little bit. Some of them have black hair, some have blonde, some have like a orangey red. I think there's a mousy brown in here too. And I had originally intended to paint their coats and vests and stuff like blue and red, green, you know, they mix it up, get some different colors in there. But given that this is Team Scarlet, I decided to go with, well, Scarlet, which would be three parts red and one part orange. Hey, everybody's a red coat. It didn't occur to me until after I had put everything together at the end of the, the whole filming process that I probably should have used like a red wash on the coats to get a bit of like shadowing and stuff. Kind of skipped that step, but eh, it'd be all right. Just something to keep in mind if you're just, you know, following along. I got one of these pots of Citadel something dirt brown. I came in some other kit as one of those try me deals. So I used that for the hats gloves, uh, a couple of straps, that kind of thing. Anywhere I wanted more brown, but a different color. And of course, don't forget to make all of their weapons silver. Then I went through with some flesh shade and put that on all of the skin tone because they all looked like they were undead at this point. Wanted to give them a little bit of, you know, skin tone. For the shields, I painted all of those red and then painted the shield boss in the middle and the rim silver. Also with these shields, these are the ones that were the uh, third print and I had a power failure and it cut off most of the ore. So I just went ahead and trimmed it the rest of the way off. That actually kind of worked out in my favor because those ores stick out quite a ways. They also stick down and I wasn't sure how much clearance I was going to have uh, once the tires were on there. So not having the ores is actually pretty helpful. And now we get to the part that I actually like doing, assembling. Oh yeah, I kind of skipped painting the sail there. Um, that was just painted white, just, just blasted white with the airbrush. And then I used my dirty paint water as a wash. In order to get the tires on the suspension system I've got here, I had to drill it out a little bit to make it fit. And I had to drill the bottom of the boat to allow the, uh, the front suspension to actually fit in the thing. I probably could have surface glued it, but it's not a very strong bond. I really do prefer when there's like a peg of some kind. For the back wheels, I couldn't have any sort of peg, so I went ahead and did the baking soda trick where it builds up like a little bit of concrete around it and touched it up with some black paint to get rid of the ugly glue mess. And now we can just uh, glue in the engine and the people and cannons and all that good stuff. It does help if you kind of move them around a few times to try and figure out what's going to work out best for you. You could maybe do that in the slicer a little bit. That would help you to scale things too. I figured I would just wing it. 
I do realize that the cannons are floating in midair there, but it doesn't really matter that much because this boat's going to be so full you'd have to actually be looking to see that. But yeah, just go through and uh, figure out where you want to put people and glue them in. This guy here, I ended up breaking his swords off by accident, so he doesn't have anything in his hands now. So I'll uh, stick him up on the mast there and have him holding on to it. And there's no crow's nest on this thing, but, you know, sure. So the little boats, uh, they give me a little bit of trouble. Because the bottom of them is curved so sharply, it's really hard to get these uh, chassis pieces to fit. They required a little bit of, of uh, messing with them. I ended up grinding the pumpkin ball away on the bottom section so that the keel of the, the small boat there would actually fit somewhere. And then with the tires, those had to be done the same as the big boat. And then getting these things to actually glue to the bottom, uh, that ended up being a hassle. I had to flip them over and put some baking soda and stuff a couple times. As for where the stuff in the boat goes, I should have figured that out before I put glue down, but I didn't. But it's alright. Try to put the engines up front first. It, it didn't really work. They're floating in the air and it is noticeable. I didn't like that. And I had also glued those grenade boxes to the back. The engine was easy enough to pull off the front so I could put the harpoon up there. Decided I wanted the engine in the back, but doing that puts the mortar pointing directly at one of the crew, which is kind of weird. Uh, thankfully, though, the grenade boxes are easy enough to just pop off with an exacto knife. That way I could put the engine all the way up against the back and then put the mortar back there. I did need to trim the back of the mortar to make it fit. That's alright, though. It still looks good. And I also cut out the seat that was um, in the middle of the boat. Now the grenade box can go up front and it's pretty much out of the way. And now I can put the crew in. Just for fun, because I had four female and four male pirates, I decided to do one crew of each, you know. It's easier to keep track of them that way in game too, because like, the boats are identical as far as like their layout and coloring and weapons and everything. It's so, like, oh yeah, it's the girl's boat or whatever. As far as how you put them in there, that kind of depends on their stance. You don't have to do it exactly how I did, but there's not really a whole lot of options just because of the way they're standing. I did try to make sure that most of them were close enough together that I could actually glue the people together, and that will be a lot stronger bond. It looks like they're just standing there only glued by their feet, but they're glued all over the place. All right, so like I said, the two little boats there, they're identical. They're um, both gonna be cars. They both have a harpoon because Team Scarlet has a whole bunch of stuff that if you crash into other people, good things happen for you if you're using all of their perks and stuff. It has a mortar. I am pretty sure you have to declare a direction on that and just because how it worked out where it's glued on, we're going to say the harpoon's facing forward and the mortar's facing backwards. There's also a box of grenades in there that has an ammo of five and it's crew fired and there's extra crew. The two extra crew is only going to cost half. Speaking of cost, that will bring the total cost of each of these cars to 23 cans. Which isn't too bad, if you did want to do a 50 point team, you could do just these two, and you'd probably be pretty good actually. All right, so the big thing there is gonna be a bus. I probably should have put the front tires a little further forward, but whatever. Anywho, that thing is gonna have some, some weirdness going on. So this game doesn't have any cannons other than like the big, huge cannon, the BFG or 125 mil, something like that. So I wanted to have cannons because the whole pirate aesthetic, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna call those blunder bus, which are just crew fired weapons. And with crew fired weapons, you need one for each crew member. In this case, I only have six, I don't have eight. Uh, the bus has a crew of eight. But uh, yeah, we're going to call those six blender bus. Uh, it's got two harpoons on it, one forward, one back. It's got a mortar, and it's got two grenade boxes. Uh, the grenade boxes are, we're going to call those Molotovs, just to mix it up a little bit. 
And as far as the crew goes, like I said, a bus already has eight crew, so I don't I don't think you need to add more. But if you wanted to, you could get crazy and have up to 16 crew on this thing. But with all the stuff it does have, that brings it up to the rather expensive cost of 52. So this would kind of be a standalone vehicle if you're doing a low uh, cost kind of team. If you were doing a no limits uh, expenditure or, or you're um, only going to run just the bus by itself or something, what you could do if you have room for 68 cans is you could double the crew on that thing and that would be just absolutely nuts when you start throwing the Molotovs around. Or with uh, Scarlet's other perks of, you know, boarding parties and whatnot. An optional house rule I was talking to my friend The Beard about is it would be kind of fun to make it to where the blunderbusses are broadsides. They must be fired all at once, like all, all three on one side. But, I mean, they are just a blunderbuss crew weapon. You can use them how you want. I just thought that'd be kind of fun. It was a little bit different style of video with this one with all the painting and stuff. I don't normally really emphasize the painting because I don't like doing it. But I learned a whole bunch of things. Hopefully you guys learned something or pick something up you can use. I said you can definitely 3D print a uh, Gaslands team. No problem. There's plenty of cars on Thingiverse. Do be careful with some of those though. They look fantastic and they're not modeled very well. Like there's pieces just floating in midair. So when you go to print it, it's, it's going to cause problems. I do actually happen to have a video about remixing things, so if you uh, print, you know, got some stuff and it won't print, or something's wrong with it, whatever, check that video out, maybe see if that'll help you out to fix whatever issue you're having. But yeah, you can definitely 3D print an entire Gaslands team. No problem. Again, all of the models I used here, except for the engine, are linked down below. That'll do it for this one. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.